Hey guys, you want to see how a person teaches racism nicely? Um, I want to play this video. Now remember, as the Bible talks about, you know how Jesus talks about there's uh, sheep and there's goats? And he says he'll separate the sheep from the goats. The way to look at it is this. Um, when the Bible talks about in Adam all die, in Christ are all made alive, and Jesus says, I come to give life. Well, if not in Jesus, you don't have life. And if you don't have life, you don't, you're not his sheep. This is why Jesus said to the one guy who said he was a Jew, he says, I know my sheep. They follow me. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. He says, you, you believe not because you're not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. You don't hear my voice. You're not my sheep. This is not a confusing verse by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's just that certain people want to hijack the Bible and make themselves chosen. And then you say, well, how are you so-called chosen? They say, well, we're chosen based on our genealogy. And you're, it's funny because the Bible says, if you sow into the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. If you sow into the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And this is also why Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Born again, not of corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible word of God that liveth and abideth. My sheep never perish forever. So this is not confusing. So there's goats, and Jesus is saying, if you're a goat, that means you're of your father the devil. If you're a sheep, that means you have one father, which is in heaven. We've had fathers of our flesh, and we gave them reverence. They corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirit, spirits, and live? Under subjection to the Father of spirits and live because all flesh is as grass and the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. The children of man is subject to death. The children of man is subject to death. So all flesh will perish and go back to the grave. That's why it says the children of the flesh are not the children of God. So the Bible is explaining that the seasons, when it talks about seasons, it's talking about bringing forth fruit. And all the children of the flesh bring forth fruit of the flesh, right? You sow into the flesh, you shall of, of the flesh reap corruption. And he's saying that fruit that you bring forth from planting the seed into the earthly woman, that seed springs up, withers, and falls away. And that's corrupt seed. He didn't say, well, you know, it depends on what quote unquote so-called race you've invented. And you can just call yourself the chosen race. And that means that you're not of corruptible seed. It says a corrupt tree cannot bring forth what good fruit. Neither can a good tree bring forth corrupt fruit. But the Bible says there's none good. But what? But one God is good. And so that's why it's saying you got to be born again by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Incorruptible seed. OK, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Luke 8, 11. So there's two Israel's. Only there's true, only one true Israel, but there's two Israels. There's the Israel of man. That is the seasons that are of this earth, born of corrupt seed, children of the flesh, 12 months in a year. So 12 months, 12 tribes. And if you go into Revelation, you see where it talks about the tree of life that bear 12 manner of fruits. Each month of the year, 12 manner of fruit each month. How many months are there? 12, 12 times 12 is 144. Today, if you hear his voice. Harden not your heart, enter my rest, born again of incredible seed, 144,000. It's a signified number. Also, when you look at Jerusalem, when it talks about Jerusalem in Revelation, it talks about the 144. When it talks about four square, that's 12, 12, 144, enter my rest, 144,000. That's saying that God's reconciling and accounting because he says, I will not leave, not, not one of my sheep. All my sheep are those who are born again of incorruptible seed. All of my sheep have eternal life. They shall not perish. The lion, the devourer, will not conquer my sheep. Death will not conquer my sheep. It's warfare. And it's warfare in the sense that it's spiritual warfare because we wrestle not with flesh and blood. And he's saying, look, all the people who are born of my kingdom, Jerusalem above, which is free, which is the mother of us all. They're here coming here in this quote unquote dark world. Right. Light had no communion with darkness as children of the light. Now, light had no communion with darkness, but he's coming. We're coming as children of the light. Let your light shine before men that they may glorify your father, which is in heaven. And we're telling people believe the gospel because it's Christ that liveth in us It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. But it's not just Christ in me. It's Christ in all those people who were born again, who are no longer children of the flesh. They're no longer children of the flesh because they've been born again, but they still have those, quote unquote, dead bodies. 
you know, the flesh. And the reason that they have we have this, quote, unquote, these dead bodies of this earth is because people can't see our eternal life. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 18, the things which are seen are temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. So we have to reach those who do not have eternal life, carnal, children of the flesh who can't please God. And but we come to them in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh. OK. And that's how we come to them. But we're not of the flesh because the Bible says ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling. You know, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you have not the spirit of Christ, if you don't have eternal life, if you're still a child of the flesh, you're none of his. My sheep never perish. OK. So that's where we are. We're the 12 tribes of Israel, the true Israel which are in the 12 hours of the day, we're in light and we don't walk in darkness because God is light and in him is no darkness. We're sealed, sealed and sanctified in God. We are the circumcision, which worship God in spirit and rejoice where? In Christ, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, not two faiths, three faiths, four faiths, five faiths, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So it says we are the circumcision, the true circumcision. Why? Because we worship God in spirit and God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in what? Truth. So if we're worshiping him in spirit and in truth, how are other people trying to worship him? Well, it says God doesn't dwell in a temple made with hands. Neither is he worshiped with men's hands. The children of the flesh, they cannot please God. So we rejoice where? In Christ. Right. And have no confidence in the flesh. So the 12 tribes of Israel that are false that's this whole world born of whatever 12 months of the year and they're born in darkness. Hence, the light came into the world and the darkness comprehended it not. And the world needs the light. The world needs the light and the light is in us. So we who are the army of God are ambassadors coming to people saying, look, we are here to destroy the enemy, which is death. Because right now you're a subject to your king and your king that rules over you is death, thorns and thistles. And we're telling you that our king conquers death, destroys the enemy with the sword, which is the word of God. So we have the helmet of salvation. We're girded about with truth. We have the breastplate of righteousness being found in him, having not my own righteousness. We have the shield of faith. Our feet are shod with the gospel of peace. And again, we have that powerful sword, that powerful sword, which destroys the enemy and the enemy that is destroyed is death. And we're saying, look, believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. And some won't believe it because they think it's foolish. And so the gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us. But it did not profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. OK, so. There's a true Israel. There's a false Israel. There's a 12 hours of the day. There's a 12 hours of the night. There's sheep. There's goat. There's wheat. There's tares. I mean, there's light. There's darkness. There's the children of God and there's the children of the flesh. Children of the flesh aren't children of God and spirit hath not flesh and bones. As you see here that I have Stephen, when you're stone called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my what? Spirit, because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, all these people believe God and they believe they were new creatures created or in Christ. Old things are passed away. Hence, the old life, the flesh being of this world is passed away. All things, Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all are become new. You must be born again. So what they have did is they said, you know what? Since we know we can't climb into heaven and since we know we can't give eternal life, what we're going to do is instead of it being a vertical thing where God is in heaven, right? <laughs> we're just going to say we're going to make ourselves God and claim that we're still waiting on God to save us and we're going to build a kingdom and we just kind of keep on waiting. <laughs> we're going to claim he's not here. We're just going to say, well, no, he's not here. I don't believe Jesus Christ is coming to flesh because he needs to come looking like us in our image. And then you got to ask yourself, well, how will you know when he comes? Because it says Jesus Christ is God that worketh in us. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, Christ in us, the hope of glory. We're the body of Christ. And we have the Savior who's the head, the Savior of the body. Godhead, who's the Savior of the body. 
right? The spirit, head, and the bride, body, say come. All those who are sealed and sanctified in the body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. They're like, no, no, the Messiah is not here yet. We're still waiting on the Messiah. You guys can't be the Messiah. Why, why can't we? Well, the Messiah is in us, though. How are we saved if the Messiah is not here? Christ, who is the Savior, is the Messiah. So if he's not here, how is anyone saved? And so what they said, they said, you know what? OK, there's a there's a dispensation like he's he came for them and they rejected him and he would have established a worldly kingdom for them. <laughs> right. This is this is what they're telling you. And because the so-called Pharisees or the so-called leaders rejected him, then, OK, he's going to come back for them later. They're on pause. Now, meanwhile, people are being born and dying every day, but they're on pause. Think about that. Because some individuals rejected him, they're saying, well, because some individuals rejected me, all of you have rejected me. Does that make sense to anyone? No, it does not. Right? It's not today if, if you as a group hear his voice. No, today if you individually, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You can't harden the heart for the whole nation, a, a group of people. I mean, what they're saying is actually pretty dumb when you think about it. And so now they say, well, when it says, go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, they call you Gentiles because they don't believe that a Jew is one inwardly, circumcision by the heart and the spirit. They don't believe in we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. They say, no, 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 no. I don't believe that stuff about avoid foolish questions in genealogies and striving about the law for their unprofitable in vain. I don't believe that. I don't believe the children of the flesh are not children of God. I don't believe that it's not that the word of God had taken an effect. They're not all Israel who are of, of Israel. That is the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. He's called the father of spirits. They don't believe it. So they just said, no, not only do I not believe it, I believe the children of the flesh, they say are the children of God. And we're going to deem it to be us, the chosen race. And just in case you're blind, you may not have noticed that we wear the same hat as the so-called papacy, who did the papal bulls who are going around conquering carnally, making it a carnal war and extorting people for their land and resources. And then we did it again under Manifest Destiny. Now we've reinvented ourselves and we're doing it again under another scam. And that's why it's so well funded. And that's why that soul scam takes on the same characteristics of the imperialist colonizers. And so now as a fake prophecy, they're trying to convince you that, hey, world, this is this is prophecy. Yeah, the world's going worse and worse. You know, aren't you going to wait? Don't you, when the savior comes back, you know, he's not here. He's not here yet, guys. But when he comes back in all this splendor. He'll be the supreme savior. And how will the supreme savior look? Will he be a supreme savior of a certain race? That the whole world must come into subjection to? Let me just fix this. So that's the lie they're telling you guys. And so they've convinced you that a, a Christian is different than a Jew. Well, <laughs> no, there's only one seed that you got to be born again by. And it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So children of the flesh aren't children of God. That's pretty simple. And if you don't believe it, you don't believe it. You just need to admit you don't believe it. When it says the kingdom of God is eternal, God's eternal, and his sheep have eternal life. And it says the things which are not seen are eternal. Well, if they're showing you signs, guess what? They're sending you a strong delusion. They're sending you a strong delusion. And you just need to. I guess you, you, you don't have faith. Substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. So you're like, hey, I need a sign. Well, uh, guess what? Billions of dollars are being spent to give you a sign. Right? <laughs> right? Okay. So I want to show you this because my whole thing was it says, go you not into the way of the Gentiles. Gentiles are pagans. Gentiles are unbelievers. Gentiles are heathens. So when it says, go you not into the way of the Gentiles, it's saying, don't go the way of the unbelievers because there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is what? Death. So don't go to the grave. Don't, don't, don't uh, die, you know, um, outside of Christ. Because if you die, you're dead and you don't have eternal life if you don't believe and become a new creature, born of incorruptible seed as a new sheep that never perishes, right? Okay. Uh, and if you're not a sheep, he's saying, hey, you may come... <laughs> 
you say you say outwardly say they come to you as in sheep's clothing clothing but inwardly they're ravening wolves or something like that so you know people are looking at the outside but it's simple the children of the flesh aren't children of god anyway let me go ahead and play this but to obey the apostles were told don't go into the way of the gentiles or those areas that were possessed by the Samaritans. They weren't at that time to proclaim the way of salvation to non-Jews. Does that mean that God doesn't care? Isn't that dumb? Oh, at that time, God was like, nah. <laughs> well, it's funny because Jesus said a couple of things. He says, I pray not for the world. He said, I come but for the lost sheep of the household of Israel. And then he proceeded to tell somebody who claimed to be a Jew that he wasn't a sheep. Right away. <laughs> Hey, I come but for the lost sheep of the household of Israel. Uh, yeah, by the way, you're not my sheep. You believe not, you're not my sheep. But, but you're lying. You're, you're lying. Because um, I, I, I'm, I be Abraham's seed. Oh, but Abraham was born again of incorruptible seed. Uh, I don't need to be born again. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a chosen race. Oh, oh okay, Nicodemus. Care about non-Jews or the Samaritans? Remember, the Samaritans were a group of people who were really kind of a biracial people. The Samaritans was an area of land that was occupied in ancient times by the, the northern tribes of Israel and a group of people came and captured them and took them away and then brought other people there. They intermarried one another. They abandoned worship in Jerusalem. They abandoned submission and obedience to the claims of God and they formed a group that wasn't quite Jewish but also wasn't quite Gentile. And ain't that, ain't that some bull crap? You're either a heathen or you're not. Gentile means heathen. Jew actually means a person who's a believer. But God says, look, I know people are going to hijack the language and misapply the labels. So the Bible recognizes that people are going to call themselves Jews. And thence it says, I know them that say they're Jews and are not, but are synagogue of Satan. Right. So it's not that God's fooled, it's just that these guys don't know how to understand the Bible because they don't want to understand it. They're waiting for, quote unquote, white Jesus to come back. That's why. That's what they're waiting on. And so um, you heard what he said. He says, well, you know, the, 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 the Samaritans were a mix. You know, they mix races. They were biracial. That's no miscegenation. Right. They're supposed to remain pure, racially pure. Right. So they can worship God racially pure. See, when you mix, when you quote unquote mis mix races, miscegenation, then you corrupt the race. Don't you get it, guys? It's not that you sow into the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. It's when you mix and sow into the, the, the flesh that's not racially pure. Then you have really disappointed God. And you're captive because you miscegenated. Well, does this mean that Jesus was a racist or a xenophobe? A xenophobe, by the way, means a person who is afraid of strangers or afraid of people who aren't like them. That can't be the right answer. Uh, especially can't be the right answer since Ephesians 5, 28, 29 says we're of Christ's body of his flesh and of his bones. And then it says, look, we got to be born again, not of the flesh, <laughs> but of the spirit. So born not of flesh nor of blood, but by the will of God. So it says children of the flesh are children of God. So that is a lie in the first place, because in Ephesians 5, 29 through 30, it says we're of Christ's flesh and of his bones. And that's talking about the quote, quote, so-called church. And so that ruins it. But they erase that from the modern versions. And when they say is he racist, see, they've just switched the... Um, they switch the arguments so instead of it being either you're born again by the spirit, a child of the flesh or a child of the promise, which is a spiritual child, father of spirits. They just made it. OK, let's break it lateral. And how do we divide people? We need to divide it based on something we can see, because we since we don't believe it's by faith, it's got to be by works and what color of skin. And uh, doing certain things works, yeah, but works in color of skin. Jesus had healed a Samaritan woman of Sychar. He'd healed a Gentile centurion servant. The proclamation would begin with the Jews. God revealed his promise to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And so this first missions trip is going to be to God's chosen people. Like God. 
They said the first mission trip is going to be to God's chosen people. Well, he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So if you're chosen, you're chosen in Christ. You know, we have the circumcision. We worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ. So you, he had chosen us in him. That's why he said, Jacob, have I love Esau, I hate it. Those are twin brothers, by the way. Jacob believed the gospel. He talked about the promise revealed unto Abraham. Well, the promise was after you heard and believed the gospel of your salvation, you're still with the Holy Spirit of promise. Abraham, the gospel preached before in Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Righteousness where? Being found in him, having not my own righteousness. Oh, that also matches. We have the circumcision, we worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ. God's the spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what this guy is saying is actually just revealing that he doesn't know what he's talking about. So he's trying to make it about Abraham's flesh. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, all born again, all born again of incorruptible seed. God's chosen servant. God. Well, God doesn't worship with God doesn't dwell in the temple made with hands. He doesn't worship with men's hands. And he talks about how he doesn't accept the work of men's hands. Right? So the flesh can't please God. It's God that worketh in us to do into will of his good pleasure. And if God's in you, he says you're no longer of the flesh, but of the spirit. God chose Jesus to be the Messiah. God chose the Jewish people to bring forth the Messiah. Right. He's still bringing forth the Messiah. So it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me, Galatians 2.20. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in you, in you, Christ, the hope of glory. Christ means Messiah. So we're the body of what? Christ, the Messiah. So what's the problem? This guy is a so-called Christian standing up here talking to some, the Jewish people. He's supposed to be a Christian. It means that's supposed to be the Messiah is supposed to be in him. And who's speaking in him if it's not the Messiah? Right? How is he saved if the Messiah is not here? There's a whole quote unquote building made with hands. And there's people in this building made with hands trying to worship God with their hands and bring their money to give to God somehow by this false prophet who's trying to profit for filthy lucre. But he's telling these guys that, well, one day the Messiah will be back. But there's somehow they got saved. Well, it says as many as received him gave you power to become the sons of God. So are these guys sons of God or not? Did they receive him or not? Today, did they hear his voice or not? Who saved them? God chose the Jewish people and then entrusted them with what's called the oracles of God or the Bible. He entrusted them with the oracles of God. And that's, is that why Jesus says, uh, my word had no place in you to the other guy who said, we be of Abraham's seed? So is it any, he's like, well, as a group, as a race, they're just entrusted. Race is made up, but you know, you need to, you need to invent race to, to, to practice racism. So he's basically saying <laughs> God entrusted them. God entrusted them, but this is the same God that said, put no, <laughs> he says he did not trust them because he knew what was in man. He said, put no confidence in man, put no confidence in the flesh. We are the circumcision of worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ. And, and have no confidence in the flesh. But God trusts the flesh. It's, this is so dumb. This is really, really dumb. And so it makes perfect sense that the same people that God revealed his promises to would be the first to receive the message of hope. No, it makes sense that you have to be born again and you have to have Christ in you so that you have to be saved by Christ, born again, a new creature created in Christ, Thus, now you have the spirit of truth in you and Christ in you can go out and save others because now you have the savior in you. Before you were saved, you did not have the, you weren't a new creature created in Christ. You were a child of the flesh. Now that you're born again, sealed and sanctified, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, we all be baptized by one spirit in the body of Christ. And you have the head, the savior of the body in you. Now you can go with Christ in you and people can be saved by Jesus who's in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now remember, Jesus is the source. He sets the standard. He issues the command. You are his servant. Jesus hasn't called you to prepare the meal, but to serve the meal. Yeah, the bread of life, the living water. <laughs> Blessed is he that hungers after righteousness, being found in him having not my own righteousness. Right? He says, you eat the, remember the woman at the well? Remember? Out of thy belly shall flow rivers of living water? I guess that makes her what? That would be the body of Christ. You know how there's a husband, there's a bride, and they're be fruitful and multiply, multiply of incorruptible seed, not the seed of the flesh. You sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. And that's part of what's happening here. Jesus called his apostles 
to serve a meal and he himself is going to be the meal. All of you, all you have to do is offer the bread to a starving world. Are all believers commanded to preach? No, but all are commanded to serve. You are, all, <laughs> are all called to preach. This is where he's trying to get the glory for himself. Uh, and if we're preaching, who's preaching in us? It says, it says, preach the word in season. That's talking about getting people saved. Seasons, fruit, one planet, one water, God give it the increase. Right? The words that I speak to you, they're a spirit in their life. Jesus, I'm the way, the truth, the life. How are you preaching without Christ? All of us are to go. We're the body. We're, all of us are told to go out and give the gospel. <laughs> so what is he talking about? Remember he's talking about your bays at this time you should be doing what? It's insane. Your job is simply God's way of providing the means for you to serve Jesus. I'm going to repeat that. Your job is simply God's way of providing a means for you to serve him. He's going for the money back. See how Judas is going for the money back? See, Judas thought he was following Jesus after the flesh, but he says, look, as many as are led by the spirit, he says, there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. Well, you can follow Jesus according to the flesh. Can you follow Jesus according to the spirit? No, you cannot. That's why he told the Pharisees, where I go, you cannot come. Why? Oh, because flesh and blood cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. Unless you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's why Stephen, when he stone called upon God, said, Lord Jesus, receive my what? Spirit. Judas is going for that money back. Are everyone called to preach? No. But everyone's commanded to serve. The pastor of the church doesn't call you to serve. This call doesn't come from me. It comes from Christ. <laughs> yeah, right. And because he says it begins here, doesn't mean it ends here. By the way, by the time we make our way through the New Testament... Is there going to be an outreach to the Samaritans? The answer is yes. Is there going to be an outreach to the world? The answer is yes. In verse 6, he says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I love that expression. The decrees followed by instructions concerning the... And then he proceeds to tell a guy who said he was a sheep. He says, you believe not, you're not my sheep. I know my sheep, they follow me. I give unto them eternal life, they shall never perish. He said, you can't hear my voice because you're not my sheep. He that is of God hears God's words. <laughs> you're not my sheep. Okay. Uh, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I got to do something else for work, for work. But uh, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.